Yeah, I'm in the process actually of um, making some ramekins. Yeah. So, what is a ramekin? Well, just uh, these ones that I'm doing are just a small little little dish, um, rolled rim. They're very useful. They 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 stack inside each other. You see. Um, they also, in the kiln, they fire, you see, one on top of the other like that, and another one on top of there like that. So you can build up a, a, a stack of them, you see. So I, I find these incredibly useful. I, I all the time using them for, say, some yogurt or, you know, some, um, some nuts, some olives. Or some leftovers, some scraps. Um, very, very useful. Anyway, there we have it, and they are they are eight and a half ounces of clay. They're four and three quarter inches wide, and they're two inches high, and they're like a, a V shape with a little rolled rim. So without further ado, I've got another batch. I've already made a couple of boards, so I've got another board I'm going to make. So let's just move the camera. Let's just move the camera down here a touch closer. And um, maybe we'll put the camera over here. You get a bird's eye view. A bird's eye view. All right, there it is. So we can talk about these as we go. Um, yeah. So here goes. I've already got the gauge set, as you can see. This is a gauge that somebody Somebody sent me, which which I'm using today. So it's basically centre <coughs> centering your lump of clay, opening out. up the clay widening out now okay now I'm gonna roll roll over the rim and I'm gonna lift him up a bit further This is the first one I've made after lunch, so I better check it. <laughs> better check it. Four and three quarters, smack on, and two. Well, there we go. That's it. Right, let's get this. We're using our stick down the side here, just cleaning off the slurry and putting a bevel in underneath, cleaning back the slip on the wheel head there, sponge and leather the rim. I've got my mirror here. I'm going to move my mirror. Put him on the other side over here. Just got him in a lump, of, a lump of clay. You see. That's it. All right. Okay. Wire. Whoa. Clumsy. 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 What? Look what I did. 
that is. <laughs> I was trying to show you the wire <laughs> sort of clean and I end up dropping one into the toggle. Not recommended. But that's one of the nice things about clay, isn't it? That it's um, forgiving material that we can, if we have to, we can make a little, a quick, a quick repair job. All right, again, clean wire, thumbs, you see, so straight down and away, like that. Now, cleaning my, my fingertips, all right, I'm going to take this one like this and pull him towards me. Okay, now he may go out of shape a little bit, but when I put him down on the board, I just give him a little joggle at the base, you see. And he goes back into shape. So the idea is I'm going to do a few of these just to show you. Could put a, you could put a small um, side handle on one of these. It's not strictly necessary to do so, I don't think, because the dish is a very simple affair and it works very well. It works very well in its simplicity. Having the having the the rolled rim enables you to it gives you a sense of of security there, feeling that you're not going to drop it because of that little extra bit of that's sticking out. So it, it gives you a sort of purchase point. So I don't think really you could put a hat you could put a little a little side handle on these. Indeed you could, but Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video I uploaded yesterday, my brother Jeremy um, from Lower Down, the Beit Shabab, the Amphoras. It's an old it's an old movie but it's not really not really found its way onto the internet until now of course so it's great making things repeat throwing you know I like the, you know, the feeling of rhythm moving from one, from one to the next one. So on. I 
and so on and on and on. See, that's how we can make our living as potters if we can learn to repeat throw. I used to work at Western Helicopters, I used to have to make hundreds of nuts and bolts on a lathe. Well, Potter's wheel is a lathe, isn't it, if you think about it? It's a kind of lathe. And um, you set that machine up, you know, to make one after the other after the other. Your, your movements become very repetitive as you operate the machine. Okay, it's time now to, to do a check. If you're working to a gauge, you need to use a rule like this and every sort of fifth or sixth one you need to you need to just check that the the gauge hasn't moved and using the end of the stick here this end of the stick to I use my finger against it on the inside, you see. Put that bevel in. And and then leather like like I'm doing. Like that. Wire him off. And another one bites the dust. No, not the dust. <laughs> if you have a gauge like this, you have to learn to, to work around it, not to hit it. But I know there's many of you out there who've never used a gauge and you really ought to use one. If you're doing repeat wear, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get much more accurate. And um, A bit awkward at first to use a gauge but don't let that put you off just work with the gauge the, the, the gauge is there to help you it's not there to hinder you I know it feels like it's there to hinder you at first but it isn't it's there to help you it's there to make life easier for you all right so See the gauge as your as your friend, not your foe. doing another sip of tea oh I get another board lump of clay there to throw down I haven't taken this one off <laughs> dear oh dear I'm getting ahead of myself you see I'm so anxious to get on with the next the next one 
Well, I hope you're all practicing out there. You know that's my motto, isn't it? Keep practicing. And it, and it is, it is so true, so necessary. We all need to practice. Whoop. Sorry, Gage. You see, even I hit the gauge sometimes. I don't think I moved it though, really. I don't think it, you just. He sprung back. But just in case he did move, we're going to measure him. Just to be. Yeah, he's okay. He's alright. So, we'll do one more, we will, so have a go at these. See, this is a foot operated wheel as you know you know and I'm but you know I'm going I've got plenty of enough speed for what I need to do you see so electric wheels are usually going to f much too fast and if you looked at that video yesterday that we put up on on YouTube from my brother Jeremy, where the commentator Jeff is talking about um, eye hand heart coordination, which is not something you can get with an electric wheel, as he said. Eye hand heart. coordination. There it is folks. Another one bites my wearboard. <laughs> so yeah. So you see in the process of that video we've made all those. Look. Dry my fingertips, stop the wheel, and lift them off. Yeah, and when you when you put him down, don't try and just joggle him from the base. A bit like that, you see? Voila. He goes he goes back into shape, into round. That's because the clay has a, a kind of a kind of temporary memory. So if you throw it round, even though you deform it, when you put it down again, if you just give it a gentle joggle, as I call it, 
that will then cause it to go back round to the shape you threw it. Please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com, and um, above all, keep practicing. See you soon. Bye-bye now.